on our way to Muskegon to do some winter spearfishing. The whitefish are in and it's time to get in the water. Mike has come over from across state. He gets over here about once or twice a year during the season. And other than that, he's pretty busy with his family. But uh, we managed to get quite a few uh, fish in the time that he was here. And uh, actually he had a really decent, nice sunny day, which is not the norm. Usually we're fighting the gale force winds and five foot rollers coming down the channel. So it's kind of a nice change. Is that, is that Looks like, like the it. correct orientation? I think so, yeah. What you're saying. Right. Okay. Okay. I love what you call the water grown out of the suit. Yeah. Like you're in a sinking ship. You can see I'm using a slip tip on the end of my spear and we switched to that about a year or so ago and found it just has much greater holding power on these really soft white fish. Uh, they're pretty strong fish and when they get to torquing around on the end of the spear, a normal spear, they can rip themselves up pretty easily and, and pull free. So this you can see is a Dyneema cord, uh, basically goes to the tip and when it goes through the fish it just uh, toggles on the other side so all they've got to work against is the the flexible line. So we've uh, retained 100% of the fish this year, didn't lose any uh, off the spear, and so uh, really impressed with how it worked. You got one already? Yes? Yeah. You just shot him. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. That was me. So in case you're wondering, that is the equalization of my ears and sinus cavities. As you descend, you need to equalize your ears for the pressure. And I was a little bit uh, congested or stuffed up that morning, so this just kind of made a lot more noise than normal. And the camera being attached to my head was picking it up really well. So our average dives for this area are about 26 to 34 feet in depth. And at this particular dive, I'm going to settle in at about 26 feet, not quite all the way down to the sand. And our best tactic has been just to wait in one place. As the whitefish are very skittish, they tend to pick up on your movement as you're pushing through the water, or if you point a gun at them, they tend not to like that and they take off. But uh, you'll see here that whitefish come through at about 10 or 15 feet off the bottom, uh, which is kind of contrary to how most people jig for them because they're always right on the rocks and that's why all those lures are hooked down there. But the uh, fish you'll see here just kind of come cruising through, suspended in open water. On this dive, I'm descending straight down to right about 30 feet. You can see the sand meeting the rocks there. And uh, we uh, just kind of hang out and wait. Again, that same tactic, just waiting for the fish to come to us. And uh, that takes a little bit of developing your breath hold to be able to do that uh, effectively and just trying to stay calm and relaxed and wait for them to come to you, uh, especially when you're staring out into kind of rough visibility and you can just barely make out shapes and shadows. Uh, so it's really important to see what you're shooting at. But if you wait long enough, they'll come through and there's one kind of crossing up the upper left and I can see a few more of my peripheral vision. So I just kind of waited it out. And uh, sure enough, here comes the rest of them.
He's coming out. <laughs> almost, wow. almost ripped all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a good dive. You had a good time. Yeah, 56. you can see is a dead white fish that has been foul hooked the evening before hey mr. carp <laughs> and uh, released as they're not allowed to keep a foul hooked white fish so they end up dying and this is just one of many we'll see over the course of the season laying on the bottom So this is a relatively shallow dive near the end of the pier and I'm just kind of working my way down over a gradual slope and I came across this little school of perch which is kind of cool and a couple suckers at first thought might have been whitefish but as the visibility cleared up near the bottom I could tell they weren't what I was after and uh, so I just kind of checked out these perch for a little bit. to look around. Perch. <laughs> a bunch of little tiny perch. Oh, yeah. I was chasing them around. It was cool. I hope I got a good video. So we're putting hot water in our gloves and boots just to kind of knock the chill out of our fingers and toes before we do another drift. this dive I'm down about 28 feet and you can see the visibility is probably close to 10 to 12 feet uh, in this part of the channel. It varies just depending on how much wave action and sediment is coming down the river system. But uh, this dive doesn't uh, turn up anything. Just end up kind of waiting it out and got toward the end of my breath hold and I pushed off a little bit just to see if anything was just outside of my visibility range, which sometimes they do.
just heard was the sound of the swivel for the shooting line rattling against the side of the gun as I moved it laterally through the water. So I'm not sure if it attracted those fish or not, but uh, it didn't matter either way because I missed. So that happens occasionally. with him for a few seconds just I'm not gonna go all the way and stay 25 seconds okay I decided to follow Mike down, uh, mainly just because he needed a new Facebook profile picture. <laughs> Another relatively shallow dive near the end of the pier and I saw this carp down there so I was kind of checking him out and then just past him I saw some white fish but unfortunately my camera must have got bumped down so you're not actually able to see the fish I'm shooting at but you also notice as I swing the gun I'm holding bands and the shooting line so it doesn't rattle and alert the fish that I'm kind of making a move on them but I did manage to score on this one and so that was kind of the last fish for that bloat we wrapped up the dive for that day. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can connect with us on Facebook at Michigan Freedivers and Spiros or Michigan Spearfishing Association. And both of those are great places to connect with other divers, to get your questions answered, to get started the right way, the safe way. Uh, as we remember, you never ever dive alone. Always dive with a buddy. Uh, free diving and spearfishing is inherently dangerous. And uh, if done incorrectly, you can get yourself in trouble in a pretty big hurry. Uh, with that, I also want to recommend that you get training. Uh, that should be the first piece of gear, quote, that you uh, invest in. 
Uh, I know it's 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 way cooler to buy a new spear gun and all the fancy you know gear and carbon fins and all of that, but uh, honestly, the training investment is the best thing that you'll the best piece of gear you'll ever invest in. Uh, it'll make you a safer diver, a better diver, more confident at depth, uh, and ultimately a better spiro. You'll be able to stay down longer. You'll be able to wait out the fish. Uh, it's just it's just going to make you a better spiro as as well as a safer diver. So invest in training. I know it may seem like a lot of money initially, but a couple hundred bucks. Uh, is sure worth your life uh, when you're doing it correctly and not developing bad habits. So with that, hope you enjoyed the video again. Uh, check out some of the other videos. Uh, subscribe, like, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.